space, so let's just find our place. Lay that mat out. And then walk yourself to the back of the mat. And we'll open your feet out kind of wide. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Open the feet kind of wide. Soften your knees and take a forward fold. So the knees are soft, the head is hanging low, and the knees are easy, right? Easy, easy. It's Saturday morning. You guys like a challenge being on the incline, huh? <laughs> All right. Sway a little side to side. Grab your elbows so the arms make a little weight. And then on purpose, just That's let the arms go. Keep the knees soft, tuck your tailbone, tuck your chin, and start to roll up slowly. Yeah, take it one vertebra at a time. As you come to standing, lift your shoulders up to your ears, roll them back, and then just stand here for a moment. Feet about mat width apart. Really stand your ground. Lift the arches of your feet. Push out into the pinky toes. And then on your inhale, slowly let your arms rise up over your head. That's it. Hook your thumbs together. Let's spread the fingers out. Go ahead and stretch over to the right side. Hook your thumbs so that the hands are kind of pulling each other apart. Uh huh. Spread your fingers like you mean it so there's some energy up there. And then the tailbone draws down and the rib cage lifts so the lumbar spine gets a little traction. Yeah. And then bring it back to center. And we'll take it over to the other side. Uh-huh. Lift out of both sides of your waist. Some of you are kind of scrunching up on your left. See if you can lift out of the left side. Yeah. There you go. And then bring it back to the center and nice and slow. Just let the arms down. All right, inhale, reach both arms again. And then exhale, forward fold. This time on the inhale, I want you to look up and lengthen. And then walk it out into a plank pose. We're going to ease in because I feel like the heat's going to come quick. Once we start moving, you're going to start dripping and we don't want to dehydrate. If you have water near you today, sip it occasionally as you're moving through the practice better if we hydrate before and after, but in the case of we're losing water quickly, we want to make sure that we're maintaining. Now lift your hips, go to downward facing dog. That's it. Just lift the hips, spread your fingers, press through the palms. Okay. All right, we're going to have a little pause in the music for just a second, but we'll keep going. Let's lift the right leg up. Take it up high. Stretch until it feels really good. And as you're lifting really high through the right leg, we're going to sink down into the left heel. So imagine that those legs have equal energy, but they're moving in opposite directions. Uh-huh. And then lift it even higher. Let the hip lift. So you're stacking right hip over left hip. Yep. Bend your right knee. Try to bring your heel towards your bottom and then gaze under the right arm. Yeah, feel that right side body open. Give a little extra push through the right hand and lift through the right knee while you're still sinking that left heel. Uh-huh, last breath. And then just nice and simple, place that foot back down. Let's walk our hands to the back of the mat. Just nice and easy. Walk it back, soften your knees. Round a lot. Tuck the tailbone, tuck the chin, and come up nice and slow. Just really ease your way through your spine, really. This is all about warming up our spine right now. Inhale, reach both arms. And then exhale, fold back in. We're just moving and breathing. That's it. That's what the body was meant to do. Lift and lengthen, inhale. Look forward and then walk it out into your plank pose. Uh-huh. We're going to hold it there for just a moment. Feel that sense of integration and elongation. Chest pulling forward, tailbone drawing back, hands squeeze just a little bit. We're going to keep those hand prints on purpose. Press through the hands and lift your hips. Go to downward facing dog. 
Uh huh. I like what I see. And then lift your left leg, please. Lift that leg up. See if you can get the uh, right heel to sink. So you have equal effort in both legs. That's it. And then we start to turn that hip open until it feels really good. Uh huh. The hip opens, the knee bends. Maybe squeeze your heel towards your bottom. Give a little push through the left hand and lift that left knee. Uh huh. And then nice and simple, just put it back down. One more time, walk your hands to the back of the mat. Uh huh. Bending those knees, pulling in the belly, tuck your chin and roll it up. Do it on one big inhale, roll those shoulders back. And then inhale, let's reach the arms high to the sky. Exhale, fold right back in. Good. Inhale, look forward, lengthen. Walk it out, not necessarily plank, but bring yourself to a tabletop pose. So our hands are right under the shoulders, our knees end up right under the hips. And we're going to take three rounds of cat cow. So we lift the head, we lift the tailbone. Yep, the front ribs spread out on the inhale, and then we go opposite. Tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone on the exhale. Yep, again, inhale, warming up the spine. Feel the articulation of the spine. See if you can move the whole thing. Exhale, round it out. One last one, inhale. Chest broadens, tail lifts, and then exhale, tuck, belly in. Okay. Nicely done. Let's take the right arm forward and the left leg back. Just stretching through the side body. See if you can find your balance here. And it's not necessarily balance that means I'm not going to fall over. <clears throat> We're looking for balance in the work. So we reach out as much as we draw in. We lengthen more than we lift. Start using your fingers and your toes with a little bit more energy. Good. Let's take one more breath. Lift a little bit. Feel the back body squeeze. And then release and switch to the other side. How are you guys doing so far? Heat coming already? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the ones in the sun. They don't even have to move you and you could be dripping. That's it. So lengthen just a little. Think about that. Belly drawing in. Limbs pulling out. But there's a balance to the work. And then we're going to put that down. Take child's pose for just a moment. And the reason I'm offering that up now is not because we need it, but because you may need it later. And I want you to know that this is available to you anytime. If you feel overheated or you feel like you need a break, this is a great way to cool yourself down. You rest your head, you calm your breath, you settle your nervous system, and then you join back in. All right, let's come back to our tabletop pose. We're going to turn it up just a little. Lift those knees. We're going to tuck the toes and hover there. It's called floating tabletop. Uh-huh, I like what I see. That's going to create a little bit of heat. And we're going to take this buoyant feeling, this ability to hold ourselves up, and we're going to float ourselves slowly back to down dog. So, like, expand as much as you can into the downward facing dog. All right. One last breath here. And then please step your right foot up to your hands. The right foot steps up. Please stay on your left toes and come on up. It's a high crescent lunge. It's kind of simple, but not always so easy. Uh-huh. Now the back knee is going to bend. That means you get up really high on the back toes. The heel is really high on the back foot, and the back knee is bending. That leg feels a little like the floating table. Take it down, shin hovering over the mat. Oh yeah, now tuck the tailbone down the littlest bit. Ooh wee, did you feel that? Did you feel what just happened? Now lean back. Mm-hmm, oh yeah. Say hello to your hip flexor. If you're feeling it, it means you probably sit too much. Anyone think that maybe they sit too much? Yeah, now the arms go up. Take a deep breath. Exhale, place your hands back on the mat. Yep, step back to plank, and this time we lower down nice and slow. Take it onto the belly. Inhale for cobra. Cobra is a sweet and gentle back bend. And then exhale, release it, and go back to down dog. Uh-huh, I like what I see again. The down dogs look alive today. So we're going to give a little extra push through the hands, lift the hips, and then when you're ready, left foot steps up. 
Go ahead, step the left foot to the top of the mat. Stay on your right toes and show me that high crescent lunge. Uh huh. Root down into your feet. So you do this with some purpose. And then make sure you're really high on the back toes. Start bending the back knee and let that shin start to hover over the mat. That means we're getting down low. We kind of squeeze in to make that feel stable. And then the tailbone draws down and ooh, the front of that hip flexor starts to lengthen. Even the front of the quads might feel a little burn here. If you want to enhance it, lean back just a touch. If you don't have any room to lean back, then certainly don't. Honor your body. Right? We're sinking down as much as we're reaching up, and in every moment, your job is to seek the balance. Take one more breath. And then on the exhale, plant your hands down. Smile as you step back to plank. Lower down onto your belly. Let's keep those hips grounded, but lift the heart, widen the chest for cobra pose. And then exhale, downward facing dog. All right. We're moving beautifully. When you're ready, go ahead and look forward. Start to walk your feet right up to the top of the mat. Feet are together. Inhale, lengthen. And then exhale, fold. With a flat back, we rise. Lift the head and chest. Start to float your arms. Let them come all the way up and touch. And then bring them right into the heart center. Pause here for just a moment. Plant those feet on the ground. Keep the palms pressing together gently and then lift your right knee up. Mm -hmm. Just again, checking in for the balance. That means right knee is lifting, left foot is grounding. Feel the up and the down. And then no drama, just simply put your foot back, but do it with some grace. And then switch to the other side. So everything is mindful movement. It's not about the execution of the pose, it's the mindfulness with which you move. And then gracefully put the foot back down. Nicely done, everyone. Inhale, reach your arms. Exhale, forward fold. Lift and lengthen on the in-breath. Let's walk it back to plank pose, step, step. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, lower down onto the belly. This time we're gonna stay on the belly, so lay it all the way down. And if you would, move your hands out about six inches on each side, which means I'm asking you to go off your mat. Yes, you might need to go a little bit onto the cement or the grass, but get up onto your fingertips. So hands are wide, you're just touching with your fingertips. And those elbows are lifted, yes. The shoulder blades are squeezing. And then come into a bigger cobra. Mm -hmm. The wider, the better here. Take those hands out a little bit more for me. Uh-huh. Elbows back, shoulder blades back. Mm -hmm. Now, listen carefully. Right shoulder is going to round forward. Left shoulder is going to roll back. And you're going to look over your left shoulder. Uh-huh. So a little twist in the upper spine. Now bend your left knee so your foot goes in the air and see if you can just look at your foot. Uh-huh, keep the hips pressing down. Just feel what's going on there. Ooh. And then release your foot, turn your head centered and lower down. Release for a moment. Always have to find a way to touch something new. If we do the same thing over and over, we have a really great opportunity to see our progress but we can't touch into new spaces in the body. We have cells everywhere that want stimulation. My goal is normally to give you about 70% familiar and 30% surprise. <laughs> yeah, somewhere around there. So those fingers are nice and wide. We're gonna come up for that cobra, big open chest, elbows wide, fingertips gripping the floor, and then go the other way. Left shoulder forward, right shoulder back. Add that little twist to the upper body. And then right knee bends, point the toes toward the sky. That's it. So you're looking at that foot behind you. Lift your head, Pam. Yes, look over your shoulder. Look over your shoulder, yes. And then let it go, release it back down. Oh, now, perfect opportunity for child's pose. Sometimes the lower back gets tweaked in the back bending. Uh-huh. So touch your child's pose, take a breath, 
And then when you exhale, go right into downward facing dog. This love is far and wide. Let's take one deep breath here. When you smile, and as you exhale, look forward. Let's walk our feet to the top of the mat. Flower. Feet come together. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. And then rise up with a flat back. Let the arms float. Bring them together to touch. And then pull it together into the heart center. All right, vinyasa time. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, forward fold. Just do what you know. Inhale, lengthen, lift. Go to plank and lower. It's one exhalation that gets you all the way down. And then inhale for cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right foot steps up, left foot turns in. It's warrior one, and we're gonna play with some added variations here. So come into what you know. Set it as your foundation. The back foot is flat. And we ground the back foot so we have an anchor, but then the left side of the body tries to pull forward. So there's that balance again, push and pull. You bend into the front knee as you lift your chest and reach higher, right? There's again the down and the up. So this is the game of yoga, right? Consciousness, awareness. We could do this practice unconsciously. We could just follow cues and not even really be connected to the work. But I invite you to really explore what's happening in your own body, what's happening with the soles of your feet. How do you stabilize yourself? Now we're going to keep our focus on the left side, keep the left foot grounded, keep the left side body reaching forward a little, and then reach a little more through your left arm and drop your right arm down behind you. The right arm can reach around for your left leg. So again, we're adding a little twist. Just feel how the left side body is super long from the toes to the fingertips. And let the chest turn out to the right just a little. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's so yummy. Make it yummy. Don't make that feel horrible. Right? If you're doing too much, it's an unhappy place. If you do it just right, you can sustain it forever. Our practice is supposed to be steady and effortless. So for those of you that are smiling, you're doing your yoga, right? You get it. Reach up with both arms, face forward. Exhale, let's flow. It's gonna feel good, hands down. Step back, lower nice and slow. Good job. Inhale, Cobra, thanks for joining in. Exhale, downward facing dog. It's always fun when you're trying something new. We come in with the curiosity of a child. Left foot steps up, right foot turns in. It's warrior on the other side. And take your time with it. We're not in a big rush today. We're gonna feel. So both feet have a job to do. Especially the back one. The back one is your anchor. And as that foot pushes back, that right side body pulls forward. That's it. And if you want to reach higher, you got to bend lower, right? And you got to do them to the same degree. That way your body kind of falls in love with what you're doing to it instead of it yelling at you for like burning one muscle out, right? Both feet have a job to do, not just the back one. Everything looks really good here. You guys look in it. Make your arms a little straighter. Uh-huh. Really like what I see here. Now, we're going to focus on that right side. So the foot stays grounded. The right side pulls a little forward. Reach a little more with the right arm and drop the left one down behind you. Uh-huh. Maybe you grab your waist or you grab your outer leg, inner leg, whatever you can. And we start twisting a little bit to the left. Woo! That right side body lengthens. Yeah. And if you're being too intense with yourself, just stop for a moment and ask yourself why, right? Like it's Saturday morning, it's freaking hot out. Like why are you trying to kill yourself, right? That's gonna result in injury and misery. Like that is not what we come to the mat for. Bend the front knee just a touch. See if you can make it feel a little more alive. And then both arms come up. Let's let it go, hands to the ground. Step back lightly, lower slowly. Keep breathing as you move through your vinyasa. That's it, we lower to the belly, inhaling for cobra. 
And then exhale back to down dog. Mm -hmm. All right. Right foot steps up. Stay on your left toes. We're going to come into high crescent lunge again. So we're just coming up, arms reach high to the sky. And for those of you at home that may not be outside, you reach for your ceiling. But whatever it is that's above us, we reach. We reach like we mean it. There's a little bit of passion. There's a little tapas, a little fire behind our poses, behind our, our presence here. Now, bring the hands to heart center. Press the palms gently together. Take your weight forward. We're going to balance on the right leg and float the left one up behind us. Mm -hmm. Now, remember when we had the spinal balancing on the ground and you were reaching forward and back on your hands and knees and I asked you to lift just a little more. I want you to do that here. Feel the glute on the left side. Lift your leg just a touch. Uh-huh. And then pull your left knee to your belly and come to standing. Yep. Hold for just a moment. Now, I want you to go knee to knee so your upper legs are equal, but your left foot is behind you. Mm -hmm. Keep pressing into your palms and then just use the left glute and push your left heel back just a little. Ooh, just feel that. Just touching something different. And then let your foot down. Feel the ease come back into your body when the weight is even in your feet. Take a deep breath, reach your arms. Carefully and slowly take your forward fold. You may need to bend your knees if the lower back is tender from that. Inhale, lift halfway. Let's go to plank and lower. Step it back, lower slowly. Inhale, cobra pose. Find your way back to down dog. Do it with some grace. All right. Left foot's going to step up. Stay on your right toes. Show me high crescent lunge. Don't rush. We're already creating enough heat. No misery allowed on the mat. <laughs> Joyful only. Purposeful only, right? Hands to heart center. Take the weight forward into the left leg. Start to float the right one up behind you. Uh-huh. Keep it simple. There's nothing contortionist about this. It's simply finding the balance. And then we're going to try to use the back leg a little smart, right? So from the right glute, we lift the leg just the tiniest bit. And then come to standing, pull that right knee to belly. Keep your eyes focused. Try not to look down. Look out, maybe there's a tree out in front of you. Something still, something grounded. That's it. Hold your head high. And then come knee to knee so your foot is behind you. And then again, just that little squeeze on the glute. Push back through the heel. It doesn't take more than an inch to get that glute to squeeze. And we're just going to hold there for a moment. And then no drama, just put your foot down. And then take a vinyasa, arms reach. You guys are doing amazing. Exhale, forward fold. Lift and lengthen on the in-breath. Let's go to plank. Lower down slowly. Honor your body if something feels creaky or tender. Inhale for cobra. Exhale, down dog. All right. Come up high on your toes, soften into your knees. Let's come to that floating tabletop just for a moment. Shoulders come over the wrists and we hover over the mat just because we can. Take one breath and then really gently put your knees down. Flip over the tops of your feet so the knees come under the hips. And then right arm forward, left leg back again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. We're going back to what we've done already. We do it so well because it's already familiar. And then just lift it a little higher. Uh-huh. Now the left knee is going to bend and the right hand is going to reach back. Grab a hold of your foot. Mm-hmm. The foot's going to kick back into the hand, which makes that right chest open just a little more. But I want you to try to keep your chest plate forward. Resist the temptation to look to the side. Keep the gaze forward and up. See how the leg power gives you a little more back bend. Yeah, you got to push down a little into the right leg and the left hand. They're going to ground you and they're going to give you some of that buoyancy. 
Now there's a lot of energy going on there between the foot and the hand. I see it. It's like a rubber band, so you got to let it go easy. Otherwise, it goes flinging out, right? And then come back to tabletop and switch to your other side. Uh huh. We're just learning how the body works, navigating this amazing vehicle we get to live in. Lift a little bit because you got muscles in the back that are strong enough. And then bend the right knee, reach back with the left hand. Feel the push pull relationship. Feel the expansion that comes from pushing down to rise up. Even though that leg power wants to pull you open to the left, your chest plate is well, forward, your gaze is forward. And so things move up instead of out. Mm -hmm. That's it. So beautiful, the work the in the spine. Lift through the crown of your head. And then without flinging, gracefully, let's put it down. Uh-huh. All right. Even so, Roll over onto your right side. Roll to your right hand same. and your right knee and lift your left arm to the sky. The left leg can extend toward the back edge of your mat. Make and then we're going to lift it. So if you already have it up, you got it. Uh-huh. So again, there's the sensation that oh, we have to push down to rise up. Maybe streamline it a little more. Tailbone in, front ribs in, so that nothing's really poking out. And then really put a little extra effort into your left heel. Push the heel out. And then turn the arm so the bicep can come over the ear. Yes, make your side body long. This is core, right? This is balancing work. Now, the arm is going to come up and you're going to bend that left knee. I want you to reach for the big toe side of your foot. Mm -hmm. See if you can create that beautiful back bend here. Root down so you feel stable, and then how much push, how much pull. If the leg power is really in the right place, you could even draw your head back. Yes, you guys look beautiful. So amazing. Now, make sure you don't cling because you'll fall over. You got to look down, release the hand, come back to tabletop, and say it. Just make a sound. Ah, I hear you. All right, that is honest. Let's try it on the other side. You know, when we focus and we really work on something and then we stop, there's a release. We call it charge and release. It's an energy shift. Go ahead and lift that right foot. Start flexing through the heel. Push it out. See if you can find that streamlining feeling. Ribs in, tailbone in. So you feel the core. Everything is in line. It's a lot easier to manage. Then the bicep over the ear. Try that. Stretch that bicep over the ear. Lengthen. Reach. That looks good. We're doing everything in balance. Then the arm comes back up. The knee bends. And we come into that back bend. Try to have palm up. Grab the big toe side of the foot. So the shoulder is actually externally rotated. And you'll have a little bit more freedom to pull the arm back. Try not to gaze down. Find something above you so that maybe the head draws back and you finish the back bend from the tailbone to the crown. Yep. And then remember that rubber band effect. You don't want to fling. You want to gracefully return to your hands and knees. That's it. Go ahead and take three rounds of cat-cow. And if you want to make them a little bigger, if you want to turn them to a dancing lion, you can. That means that it can be a little bit more wavy, a little bit more fluid. It doesn't have to be so linear. Yeah, move through the shoulders, the hips, the neck. Let's all do the dancing lion. Forget that cat cow stuff. <laughs> move your ribs. Be a little free with it. Perfect music for that kind of movement. Do it from your soul. And then make sure you kind of switch around to the other side so you're not just doing the same thing over and over, but that we touch in both directions. Think of your spine like a snake. And it can move in all different directions. And then we'll settle into stillness. Let's tuck our toes and lift our knees. Again, find your power and roll yourself back to downward facing dog.
When you're ready, one hand at a time, walk back to your feet. Try to move like a cat. Lift each hand as you walk it back. Soften your knees, reach down and grab your big toes with the peace sign fingers. It's called Padangustasana. And there's a lock here that's really, really important. The big toes push down as the fingers try to pull them up. And you'll feel that push-pull. Don't be aggressive, just see where they lock into each other. That's it. Let your head down. Let your elbows splay out a little wider. And breathe. Oh yeah, Make that thing. Rain. Breathe. <laughs> Make it rain. Now the knees could be a little soft here, but they Make also could try to straighten. And it's not so Make much that we need the legs straight, but we want to maybe pull the thighs back Make away from the belly and then let the belly move in a little oh, closer to the thighs. Yeah. Now release the hold on your toes. Bend your knees enough to feel your hamstrings squeeze, so the opposite action. Instead of pulling on them, we contract them, and then we roll up slowly. Uh-huh. That's it. Take care of your spine. Roll those shoulders back. How you guys doing with the heat? You okay? Yeah. Thank you for coming out on July 31st. And I'm, ho I'm hopeful that we will be here all through August, in September even when it's raining. Yeah? Been Take a deep breath, reach your arms. So Exhale, forward fold. My heart's been Lift and lengthen, you. look forward. Go ahead, walk it out. Do your vinyasa. That means plank, lowering on the exhalation. Oh, come here Inhaling through cobra here. pose. And then Every exhale body. right back into down dog. Mm -hmm. All right, right knee is, right foot is going to step forward, and left knee is going to go down. In my darkness, I, I get ahead of myself sometimes. <laughs> Arms sweep up over the head. And this time I want you to interlace to all of your fingers door. except for the index. Mm -hmm. wipe your That's it. Now think about that hip flexor. We've touched to it a bunch river. of times. I want you to start to bend the right knee so you feel the stretch in the front of your left hip. That means the left hip bone might draw in and down a little bit. And as you sink down into the hips, start lifting up through the ribs. Lift the belly, lift your gaze right to your fingertips. Now if you're reaching the arms straight up and you tip your ears back, you could look at your hands. Uh-huh. If you're feeling a lot of pressure on the left knee, put more pressure on the ankle and the shin. Uh huh. Take the pressure off the patella. It doesn't like it. Use the whole knee, shin, ankle, toes. Mm -hmm. And then start to fold forward. Let those fingers point right down to the mat. Lower your head. Come all the way down. You can release the binding of the hands and round forward. So a little back bend, a little rounding, and now we're gonna add a little twist. Left hand stays on the floor, right hand comes up on the knee. And I want you to push down into the left hand so you can really open your chest out wide. And we're gonna start looking over that right shoulder and then bend your left knee behind you. Yep, see if you can reach back now with your right hand and grab it from the pinky toe side. Yep. Grab the pinky toe side. Some of you are grabbing the big toe side. And some of you are not grabbing at all, and that's okay. You don't have to. <laughs> Every single thing is optional. You know that? Even being here was of your own free will, right? I can't make you do anything. Everything is a suggestion. Take a big breath into your chest. Make sure everything feels good. And if it doesn't, Ask yourself why you're doing it. Let's release the hold on the foot. Look forward. Let's just tuck, toes, tuck the back toes and step into down dog. Paddle your feet a little bit. Move not only through your feet and ankles, but your knees and your hips. That's it. So it's like walking the dog in place. And you got to let the hips move a little. Mm-hmm. Please let me know 
Take me to your river. Let's take a vinyasa nice and slow. Forward into your plank. Lower down nice and slow. Inhaling through a gentle back bend and then exhaling to down dog. So we've got that nice big hip opener on the other side. The left foot's gonna step. The right knee is gonna go down. And we're gonna take both arms up over the head. Tell me something, go ahead and interlace Are you everything but the index. But see if you can do it the other way. Like put the other one in front and Love then, you yeah, just play with your brain a little bit. So usually if you do left index in front, start Is with right index in front and then release the index, but keep for. everything else bound. Uh-huh. Now there's a lot of things to manage here, the down and the up. Can you give them equal importance? Maybe the front knee bends so you can drop a little bit into that right hip flexor. But as you drop down, feel the rib cage lift, feel the chest rise, feel your arms reach. Maybe you just tip the ears back and look at your hands. As much as we want to reach for the sky, we got to root down into the earth. And as we learn how to manage that, the practice becomes steady and effortless. Aren't you tired trying to fill That's it. That void? And then just let your eyes follow your hands. Bring your hands all the way down to the mat. Once they touch, you can release the bind. Let your head humbly bow forward. So touch your hands down to the floor. Let your head go. Yeah. So if there was pressure in the hip flexor, if there was pressure in the back, we've just let it go. Right. We're going to turn this into a twist. Right hand stays down, left hand goes to the knee. Have a little fun with it. Mm -hmm. Maybe even take the right hand a little bit wider and give yourself a little space. And as the twist comes alive, you can start looking over that left shoulder. Maybe the right knee bends behind you. And you can grab for the pinky toe side of the foot. Now remember, you could squeeze your heel toward your bottom. That would be one sensation. But you could also kick your foot back into your hand and open the back bend a little bit more. So you gotta decide which one feels better. One isn't right, one isn't better. And there isn't one that's wrong or bad. And you could also not even grab your foot. Take one more breath, make it feel pleasant. And then just let it go. Both hands come down, let's tuck our back toes and make our way to down dog. And I don't know how you're not singing. Like if I was in my car alone right now, man, I would be jamming out. <laughs> not with the mic on in front of 150 people. <laughs> All right, walk it out. Find that looseness, right? A little bit of movement fluidity through the toes, ankles, knees, and hips. All right. Take one good deep breath here. And then look forward and walk your feet right up to the top of the mat. As you come to the top, bring the feet together. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. And then with a flat back, we rise. The arms float high, touch the palms together, and then pull it right into the heart center. All right, let's all stand on the right leg, but bend the left knee so the foot is behind us. Then we're simply gonna take the left hand back and grab the big toe side of the foot. Mm -hmm. That means the shoulder rotates open. And I know you know how to kick your foot back into your hand, but as that left leg kicks back, I want the right arm to reach forward. Yep. Do it in equal measure. You got to push and pull. You got to reach, right? And extend. And at the same time, the belly pulls in. The outer hips squeeze. Try not to let the left hip open. Have a little discipline there. Keep the left hip down. It. They drew out a map and they showed your you thumb the in front of you could be the best focal point. It's far in the east where your heart is at peace and with then gracefully pull it back in. Let it go. 
magnificent. My love is just to the other side. Find your center. My love is Stand just on your left leg. Bend your right knee behind you. Reach My back. Grab a hold of the big toe to side. Mm -hmm. Now you know if you're going to kick that leg back, you got to reach the left one forward. And just go slow, so you do them to the same degree. There's a little squeeze on that right glute. And we're trying to keep that right hip even with the left. Your thumb in front of you could be the best focal point. Reach straight out in front, look at your own hand, and then see the whole rest of the universe beyond your own hand. Amazing. With some grace. Release and pull it back in. So good. Inhale, reach your arms. Exhale, forward fold. Lift and lengthen on your in breath. Go to plank and lower on the out breath. We're going to rinse it through. Come back to what we know. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take one good deep breath here. Let's all let out a little sigh. Just let out a sound that's honest. Ah. And then in your own way, come to a seated position. Drop to your knees, swing your feet around. You can sit any way you like. If you want to sit on your heels, that works for me. If you want to sit in simple cross legs, Sukhasana, that works. If you know the sun is killing you and you want to move to a shady spot, this would be a good moment. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of shade up front. And then once you settle in and you know you are where you want to be, just close your eyes. And I know for some of us, closing our eyes, especially in a public space, can be uncomfortable. So you don't have to. You could set your gaze slightly forward and down, just soften the eyelids. So whatever your experience is in your life, I want you to honor it. We're here to heal the traumas of our lives, not to add to them. We're here to let go of some of the stuff that we hold that no longer serves us. We're here to build a relationship with this beautiful body that we have been gifted. For a moment, be in awe of your breath. Each and every breath is a miracle. We all only get so many. I think of each breath as a miracle and I think of each one as a gift. And I shudder to think of how many moments of my life I've already missed. What we're learning right now is to be present. you are in this moment let's put our hands onto our knees just really small really gentle you start to breathe and move coming into that little bit of a cat cow so inhale lift your chest stick your tailbone out a little and then exhale round tuck your chin and your tailbone we'll do three inhale just move through your spine exhale round create a little space around the kidneys and then one more. Inhale, lift your heart, squeeze the shoulder blades back. And then rounding one last time. 
when you're ready, you can just swing your feet around in front and take both legs straight down the mat. Good. Right knee is going to bend. And I want you to pull it in close to your body. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to bend your left knee and put your left foot next to your right foot. Let the right knee drop, o sorry, left knee drop open. Uh-huh. That's it. And hold on to the right one so you can sit up a little taller. Yep. And then believe it or not, I want you to take your left elbow and I want you to put it on your left leg and I want you to lean in. Oh yeah, like push that leg down. And as you do, lift your chest up. Mm -hmm. Keep pulling on the right one to lengthen the spine up. Just create a little space. And then we switch over to the other side, pulling the left one up and the right one down. Use the left one to lengthen your spine upward and then just lean a little bit into that right knee. Put a little body weight on it. Mm -hmm. Might even feel good to look towards your left elbow. Mm -hmm. And then come back to the center. Let both knees drop open. Interlace your fingers over your toes and again try to sit up really tall. As you lengthen up through your spine, squeeze from the outer hips and see if you can lengthen the inseams of your legs and draw the knees out wider. Mm -hmm. Take one more breath, lift the chest a little more. And then with the exhale, just soften. Let your feet move about 10 or 12 inches forward. So you have lots of space between the groins and the heels and then round your head towards your knees, lengthening the spine and rounding at the same time. Just let the head down. Next inhale, rise up, close those knees up, and then drop your knees over to the right side, just both knees go right, and then just simply walk your hands toward the back edge of your mat and keep your chest lifted, mm -hmm. turning around to face the back of the mat, a little weight on both hands, it's a really nice twist. You can stay upright like that with the chest lifted and wide or you could drop down onto your forearms. That might feel really good and it might feel too intense. If your spine is feeling bendy after the practice, you might even open your arms out like a T. It's all optional. You could stay on your hands, you can stay on your elbows, or you can lay on your chest. And one isn't right or better or good one isn't bad or wrong. They're just different. Take one more breath. And then if you laid all the way down, you got to gracefully find your way back up. Get some weight on your elbows and your hands and then turn yourself around to face forward. Take it slow. You should be starting to cool down a little bit. Knees return to center and then let them drop to your left side. Yeah, just start to turn around, like look toward the back of your mat. Keep your chest up. See if you can get some weight on both hands and just test that out. How does that feel? It's mermaid pose. It's perfect just the way it is. And if you want to go in a little deeper, you drop to the elbows. If your spine is already saying it's enough, just stay. Close your eyes and you don't look around and you listen to your own intuition. It really doesn't matter what anyone else is doing around you. If they're doing their work with integrity, it supports yours. Go ahead and take one more breath. Mm. 
find our way back up. You get on the elbows, get on the hands, turn yourself around, face forward, both knees come back up to the center. Here comes the sun. And then open your feet a little wide, but keep the, the knees sun. bent and fold forward so the head can drop right. to the knees. And I want you to really get that sense of the rounded spine, the tailbone tucking under. And you're going to stay kind of round as you lower yourself down onto your back. So the tailbone tucks, you feel your lower back round, then you feel the rib cage touch down, then the shoulder blades, and then release your head down. It takes a little bit of core work, but it's good supporting the spine the whole way. Once you get there, just put the feet together, let your knees drop open, take your arms up over your head, let the hip joints and the shoulder joints be at ease for a moment. Here comes the sun, I say it's all right. Take one more breath here. Make it a clearing breath. Open your mouth. Let out a little sigh. Let go of any tension that might still be lingering in this moment. And then slowly bring the arms down and the knees up. It might feel good to give yourself one more squeeze. Knees to the belly. Some of you like a little happy baby stretch or some of you are ready for your final resting pose. If you are feeling yourself wind down and you're ready for neutral, just let your legs go. If your body's asking for just one more thing, honor that. As you finish doing whatever it is your body needed, be willing to let it all go. I think sometimes a practice like this makes us even more attached to our physical We get so wrapped up in the poses, and so wrapped up in the movement. See if you can give the same amount of love and devotion to the stillness. Let's 
begin our awakening slowly. Take a moment to listen to the mantra. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. It means may all beings be happy and free. May the actions of my own life and all of our lives somehow contribute to that happiness and that freedom. It's an ask that all living beings be happy and free. How beautiful is that? That somehow we could contribute not just to our own happiness, but to the happiness and the freedom for all. That's how big our presence is. That's how much each of us matters. We are all part of something bigger. So as you awaken, as you stretch and move and breathe and you come back to sit in this beautiful community, know that your place in it is part of the whole. So we come to sit, we take a moment to notice how we feel, and we bring our hands together at the heart. And together we will do one thing, we will do one thing, and that is to make one sound. All of our voices, an expression of each of us becoming one. That is the yoga. All of us letting our voices rise together and become one sound. So we'll make the sound, the beautiful and sacred sound of Om. Take a deep breath in with me. Um. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti He. Om Peace, Peace, Perfect Peace. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. May all beings be happy and free. May my own life and all of our lives and all of our actions contribute somehow to that happiness and that freedom for all. May we all know peace, peace, perfect peace. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming out. Doesn't feel so hot right now. <laughs> Make sure you hydrate today. Take really good care of yourselves. Be nice to people. Uh, yeah, th I have clipboards here. They went around early in the practice. If you wouldn't mind coming forward to sign, the city has a waiver here that they actually ask that we all just put our name on if we're going to be practicing. And I know we didn't get to all do it before the practice. If you would be so kind to come up and sign the waiver form. And um, we do have a tip box up here. So if anyone's interested in putting in a gratuity, you can do that as well. And I have a form that you could fill out to be added to my email list. So in case the park ever gets canceled or you're interested in the other events that are happening in the Yoga Journey community, um, I would be happy to add you to the list. We don't bombard you. We send two ne newsletters out, one from me personally and one from my studio. They happen on the 1st and the 15th. So if you're interested in staying in the loop, I'd love to connect. So come on up and give me that email or just your signature and have a beautiful day. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, this is the waiver and that's the emails. Yep. What'd you say? Oh yeah, and the tables and chairs. So all in the back here, these orange tables and chairs, the city has them set out beautifully for the community to be able to use to lunch in the park, but every Saturday we have to clear them away and put them back. So if we had a couple extra hands, I think that would be lovely. If you could come on up and lend a hand 
put the chairs and the tables back out. We put a table and a f two or three chairs by each of the umbrellas, and that should pretty much do it. Thank you. Thank you. So email list and waiver form. And there was another clipboard going around somewhere on the other side.